Hey guys, Christina C. Jones here again. Welcome back to my channel. So, last year I was approached by a public library by the Baltimore County Public Library and I was asked to participate in their Indie Author Day. It was something that they did annually and uh, the director of the program had seen a few of my YouTube videos and wanted to know if I would talk to, you know, talk to their audience about self-publishing. Um, it was a very terrifying, <laughs> it was very terrifying because I am, you know, the only expertise I have is that I've done this. And so I was very scary, but I said yes. And then um, I promptly completely ignored, <laughs> promptly pushed any thoughts of it out of my mind because, oh my God, what did I agree to? But eventually I was able to calm down and find some, <laughs> find some zen and pin down six main points that I think are kind of keys to the kingdom when it comes to self-publishing. Um, the, what I titled my seminar or <laughs> my speech or whatever you would call it was let me show you how self-publishing works and in it there were these six key steps that I went through or six key things that I went through and what this series of videos is going to be is me going through those points one by one giving a little more detail about each of those points and so there will be six of these videos this is going to be video number one and in each one I'm going to just take you through what I think are some of the most important parts of becoming a, a successful self-publisher so let's get right into it so the to me <laughs> i can't speak for what anybody else may say and the rest of these steps are not necessarily going to be in any type of order but i think that one of the most important steps is the most obvious step you have to finish a book you can't publish an unfinished project you have to get the book finished and that involves sitting yourself down and getting the book written out and I of course I have done this like 62 63 times something like that I can't remember what project number I'm on over the eight years almost that I've been publishing so yeah I get it it's not it's 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 not as straightforward as it sounds but it has to happen and so one of the things that you can do to help you get your book down to help get it done if you're having trouble with getting your plot line down or getting the words to actually flow something that helps me a lot is to visualize my characters you can get on pinterest and pin pictures that remind you of this is what my character looks like this is this is something that they would wear this is where they live different things like that it it can kind of sound a little cheesy but i think that it's actually really helpful because it helps those characters become real to you they're not just someone on a page they're not just a flat person on a page they're a real live person that you're writing about and it helps them become more than just a character you're not writing a personality type or a job or whatever else you're writing a person who has these different characteristics and visualizing them helps with that a lot what do they look like what do they sound like all those different things it Again, it can sound really cheesy, but it honestly does help. This next thing, <laughs> I'm just going to go right to it. Outline if you must. Um, I have spent the large majority of my career pantsing for my life. I'm sure you've heard of plotters versus pantsers. I would tell anybody who would listen, I do not plot. I don't want nothing to do with that. But listen, at this at this point in time, <laughs> at this point in time, a little loose outlining never hurt nobody. It gives you room to be very flexible for your characters to tell you new things about what their journey looks like. But it also gives you some structure. It gives you the ability to be able to think ahead in the story. And that can help you if you're stuck. If you know that your character is going to rob a bank at some point, okay, what needs to happen in order for us to get there if that's if that's not where we're meeting them if we're not meeting them at the robbing of this bank okay what 
what what are their motivations for doing this? What are the steps that are going to lead to that? What are, what are they doing the morning before? Where is the where's the planning? Where's the you know the 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 nerves and the anxiety about what's going to happen? If you know where your characters are going, it gives you that ability. If I know where my character is headed, I know what I need to do, or I can think through what I need to do in order to fill in until we get there, and that's going to help me get those words down on the page. I cannot, obviously none of this, I can't speak for anyone else, but I personally, I need quiet when I write. I cannot have the TV on. I cannot have music playing. I need quiet, which is um, an incredible luxury when I have a house full of people. My kids are distance learning. My husband works from home as well. Sometimes he has meetings, the kids are on Zoom, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot of noise happening. And so one of my favorite purchases <laughs> is a pair of noise canceling headphones so that you can, you know, either you can just have the headphones on or you can use an app or a playlist on your favorite, on your favorite music streaming service white noise, lo-fi music, whatever it is that you need to do in order to create the environment that you need to lock in. You can even have, if you're used to writing at a Starbucks or something like that or whatever coffee shop, put on your headphones, play some coffee shop sounds, light a coffee scented can candle to kind of help yourself set that mood so that you can get into the vibe that you need, get the energy that you need around you in order to be able to continue writing your book. Speaking of utilizing technology, um, you have a very important tool, most likely. You're probably watching this video on that tool, your cell phone. You can use that cell phone to take notes when you're waiting at the dentist's office or you're in bed and suddenly, and of course, I have to let everybody know that I can't actually snap my fingers, but you're in bed and, and a, a light bulb goes off for you. Please, for the love of God, do not tell yourself that you're going to remember it. You're not going to remember it. Grab your cell phone or a notebook. If you're, you know, you're old fashioned, grab a notebook, write down your thoughts about the work. If you're going through it, you're before you go to sleep at night, which I actually very highly recommend. This is something that I do often to help myself kind of wind down from the day. Like I'll, you know, I'll lay down. I've got my sleep mask on, but my head I'm thinking about my characters and that leads me into, you know, I go to sleep thinking about my characters often unless I, you know, unless it was just a long day and I'm tired and I just passed out. But a lot of times I will very intentionally think about my characters and new stuff will come to me. And so I might have to stop and grab my cell phone and write something down, jot something down in a little notes app or something really quick. But a lot of times those ideas are ideas that are really going to help you push your story for it. And also, if you don't feel like sitting up, you know, you don't feel like being at your desk or wherever, you can use that notes app. You text all you you text, you tweet, you're in the comments on YouTube or <laughs> whatever gossip page on Instagram and you th those fingers be flying. You, your fingers can fly over some chapters, over some words for your book. If you have this great piece of dialogue or this great idea uh, for a scene, start writing it down and use your cell phone. If you use something like Google Docs, you can easily transport that to your computer so that it's available to you when you, you know, whenever your next at your main writing device is, it's, it's all cloud-based. So it's available to you, very easy for you to get back and forth wherever, wherever you are. That's gonna help you get that book done. Um, another piece of technology that helps me a lot is often I will dictate, um, meaning I'll use, again, going back to Google Docs, I'll use the Google Voice, um, the Google Voice feature with, you know, with my earbuds or whatever while I'm exercising, while I'm on the bike, if I'm doing like a leisurely type of thing, not if you're doing like, you know, the intervals or something like that, you probably can't do it then, you need to be focused. But if you're doing like something leisurely, it's a light day or you go outside to get some air, get the fresh air, like that was game changing for me, not this past summer, but the summer before that. Um, I did a whole lot of walking, just something about the fresh air, just walking around my neighborhood, dictating. People who saw me probably thought I was crazy. They, they probably honestly just thought I was on the, thought I was on a phone call <laughs> or something. But 
I got so many words down and I mean, they're going to need a lot of editing. They're going to need a lot of editing because voice typing or vo dictation, the software is, it's not perfect. It's not great. But at the very least, it'll be able to keep you tuned in. You, it'll, it'll be able to tune you back into where you were mentally when you were putting those particular words down. And you'll know what you were talking about. You'll be able to go back, make those edits. And now there's been days that for over an hour walk, I had 1500 words. 1500 words is a lot in the course of getting a book done. So get it in wherever you can fit it in, but get it done. And finally, one of the most important things to getting your book finished, stop overthinking, stop downplaying yourself. Those two things to me are the biggest killers of any book project. And it's actually those, they're, they're both things that I actually struggle with a lot myself. Um, as I said in, earlier in the video, I've written more than 60 projects. I think I kind of know what I'm doing. I know nobody is saying that everything that I do is perfect. I can't do anything wrong. I can't make mistakes, but I kind of know what I'm doing <laughs> at this point. Like I kind of, I, I, I kind of get the, I kind of got the, the, the overall picture of how it's done. What's the point of spending my time sitting around feeling, but well, what if people don't like it or like, yeah, there's going to be people that don't like it, but guess what? There's going to be people who do. There's going to be people who don't like everything <laughs> that everybody does. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't like it. You can't let thoughts about that hinder you. Just, just get it done. That's really it. So thank you for watching. <laughs> that is the first of, like I said, six tips that are going to help you um, along your self-publishing journey, hopefully. Um, the next ones, I'm not going to tell you guys the next ones. You'll have to tune in for, you know, you have to tune in for the rest of the series, but hopefully this video was able to give you some tips that are going to help you get your book finished and maybe, well, probably not by the next time I put up another video. That will be pretty fast because I plan to get these done pretty well, but hopefully not that you'll be finished by the next video, but hopefully you'll have some progress by the next video. And if you do, I want you to let me know on the next one. Bye.